Okay, so now that we've seen two different versions of the chain rule in multivariable calculus, I'm going to show you a general version of the chain rule, which will handle all multivariable situations. So here's the general chain rule. So suppose that u is a differentiable function of n variables x1 through xn. And the definition of differentiable in this case is sort of an obvious generalization of the two variable case. Okay. Now suppose that each of these variables xi is a differentiable function of some other variables let's say t1 through tm okay but then we could try to calculate the derivative of u with respect to one of these variables, say ti. So for each i from 1 to m, the partial derivative of u with respect to ti is the partial derivative of u with respect to x1 times the partial derivative of x1 with respect to ti plus partial derivative of u with respect to x2, partial x2, partial ti, up to partial u, partial xn, partial xn, partial ti. Or using summation notation, this is the sum from j equals 1 to n of partial u, partial xj, partial xj, partial ti. So this is the most general version of the chain rule. So the cases that we saw before are where n equals 2 and m equals 1 or 2. But this rule will handle functions with any number of variables. So let's do an example to see how this works. For example, suppose u is x cubed plus xyz plus z cubed and x equals s squared plus t squared y equals r times s, and z equals r squared. So in terms of the previous notation, u is a function of three variables. So, so here n is equal to 3. And x, y, and z are functions of the variables r, s, and t. Now, x doesn't have any r in it, and y doesn't have any t in it, and z doesn't have any s or t in it. But you could, if you like, think of x, y, and z all as being functions of r, s, and t in some cases not depending on all those variables. So this would be m equals 3 also. Okay, And you can draw a diagram to show what depends on what. So u depends on x and y and z. And x depends on s and t. y depends on r and s. And z just depends on r. Okay. So what the chain rule tells us, let's say we want to calculate partial u, partial r. The chain rule says we have to sum over all of, the, all of the variables that u depends on. So the first term is partial u, partial x, and then we multiply by partial x, partial r. And the second term is partial u, partial y, partial y, partial r. And the third term is partial u, partial z, partial z, partial r. 
Now, in this particular case, um, the variable x doesn't actually depend on r. So we could forget about this first term because partial x partial r is going to be 0. Um, anyway, if we just follow the general chain rule, we, we write this down. Or you can also look at the diagram. So you have to sum over all variables that u depends on and then take their partials with respect to r. So here, there's an r over here and there's an r over here. So the first term, there's no r over here. Anyway, the first term we look at the partial derivative of u with respect to y times the partial derivative of y with respect to r. So that looks like this. And that, that corresponds to this first term over here. And then there's, there's also um, a dependence going through z like this. And this corresponds to the second term. So I'm not sure which way to remember this is most helpful. Anyway, we can now calculate this. So partial u partial y is xz. And partial y partial r is s. And partial u partial z is xy plus 3z squared. And partial z partial r is 2r. And we might want to substitute in for x, y, and z to write this as a function of r, s, and t. So let, let's not actually do that, but I'll just say you can substitute for x, y, and z to get a function of r, s, and t.